folks. Uh, I'm excited this morning because what I have here is a bowl of Janara and I'm gonna try something that I've been wanting to do for years now. That's to make Lignum Neferticum. Uh, he wasn't the first person to do so, but in 1650, a man named Johann Bowen put some shavings of wood from what was later determined to be Nara uh, into a cup of water, and then he made the following observations. When water was poured into the cup and the sawdust macerated in it, the water assumed in a short time a wonderful blue and yellow color, and when held up against the light, beautifully resembled the varying color of the opal, giving forth reflections as in that gem of fiery glow, bright red, glowing purple, and sea green most wonderful to behold. Now at that time, Johann Bauhin, uh, when he made those observations, the wood that was used to make the infusion came from a tree described as Lignum Nephroticum. Uh, that roughly translates to kidney tree, and that infusion that he was talking about has fluorescent properties. And today I'm going to do an experiment to try to make Lignum Nephroticum using Nara wood. Uh, Lignum Nephroticum was first brought to Europe as a medicinal substance. It came via Mexico. Uh, I'll get into the Mexican origins more in just a minute, but it was used as a diuretic among other things. Uh, I'm not sure how effective or even safe consuming that liquid is, so I'm not going to drink it today or recommend doing so. Today what I'm more concerned about are the fluorescent properties of the liquid. So, uh, And in that quote, you talked about using some sawdust, some wood shavings of, of Nara, but uh, often what was used were Nara cups and by just placing the cups or placing water into the cup made of Nara and they let it set after sometimes the chemicals from the wood would dissolve in the water and it would have those fluorescent properties. So uh, I'm going to use a Nara cup here and I want to note though that Ligrum nephroticum is actually thought to have come from two different legumes, uh, the Nara and then also from uh, Mexican species known as Mexican kidney wood. There were notes of the substance back in the 1500s and people wrote about it clear into the 1700s uh, and it was used by by Robert Boyle and Isaac Newton in their studies of color and light. Uh, the first recorded instance of fluorescence was actually looking at Lignum nephroticum. So although there are a lot of accounts that we have of Lignum nephroticum that came from European sources, of course they didn't invent it. Uh, the use of the species uh, was noted by the Aztecs in the New World and also natives of southern Luzon. The visual and medicinal properties of this uh, made Nara cups fit as gifts for royalty, so they were very precious in Europe uh, and were actually given to royalty. But by the early 1900s, the species that were used to make it were no longer known, and, or at least by Western science, and it took some effort to determine what was being referred to when we were looking at Lignum nephroticum. Uh, part of that confusion came from the fact that hundreds of years ago, when the Spanish were occupying Mexico and the Philippines, trade from the Philippines was actually routed through Mexico uh, through Manila galleons, and Lignum nephroticum was always noted as originating from Mexico because anything from the Philippines was actually going through Mexico. Uh, and one species that was noted as Lignum nephroticum did come from Mexico, so that added some more confusion. And though most of the cups that were used in Europe were actually thought of being Nara because the species of wood in Mexico uh, was thought of not generally being large enough to make cups from and a lot of the accounts talk about large logs of this species. Uh, before we start, I want to look at the grain of this Nara bowl. So I'm going to flip this around here. It's very beautiful. You can really see why this wood is... Uh, this isn't from a burl, but burls of this wood actually make some of the most expensive wood on the planet. But anyway, I want to get uh, started. I want to pour some water in this, so 
Uh, let, if it takes some time, I'm not sure if it's going to be an instant uh, transformation. It, they do let it set in the resources I've seen for about a half an hour, so we'll see what happens. But we'll pour water in. If we need to let it set, I'll come back later. All right, so I am set up here with the Nara bowl and a glass of water. We'll pour this in and see. I don't know if we'll have any immediate effects or we're going to need to wait a little bit. So we'll see what happens here. You can see when that Nara is wet, it looks very nice. So as of right now, I don't see anything there, but uh, we'll give it some time to set. I've, when I was reading about these, the uh, is kind of noted that the lighter Nara actually has a better effect than the red, but the red will act, will do this also. So we'll see what happens and come back in a little bit. Uh, I was going to do a time lapse on this because I thought it would take more time, but if you look you can already see some blue streaks forming in here from it. It really is beautiful. It does have a, a opalescent look to it. I'm interested in how long it's going to take for it to actually form. You can actually see it's actually kind of following the grain, this blue. So that's sort of interesting too. So it's obviously concentrated in some areas more than others. We need a nice wisp of the blue in there. All right, we'll go back to the time lapse here. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half. Uh, it's really beautiful watching that change. Uh, it's, I'm not sure if you can see it quite as well. The colors are fairly close, at least in the, my screen and in real life here, but hopefully you could see those opalescent chemicals as there's sort of wisping in the water there as it was slowly dissolving. Uh, the cup itself, if we look down on the side, starting to, the water starting to kind of seep around the outside there. I'm hoping the sun's sort of peaking out. It's supposed to come out this morning. You can sort of see it's uh, it's coming out now. So I'm hoping that at least for a little bit it stays out so that we can see the colors a little better, but at any rate, I, I read this uses UV light to fluoresce, so there should still be UV light even if it's a little cloudy. Um, I'm gonna pour it into a cup, and we'll see what it what it looks like when it's outside of this bowl here. Okay, I'm not sure how easy this will be. You probably should use a funnel, but we'll try it. You see a nice blue hue there, right at the top something I read about quite a bit. Hopefully I don't spill too much of it. Ah, it has a... something you couldn't... something you couldn't really see inside of the bowl itself as a amber color. Uh, different accounts of Lenum Nefertikum will talk about the color of the liquid. Some talk about this amber color, some talk about it basically just looks like water, just transparent and colorless. Uh, they always talk about this nice blue ring up at the top. Of the glass itself and then depending on your angle with the liquid it is supposed to or between the liquid and the Sun and you you get a lot of different colors 
and they show up. So here we have the sun just sort of shining straight down on it from back behind the glass. Really beautiful. Here you can see uh, the sun is off to the right. See more of the blue showing up. Now here you can see the with the sun directly behind the camera. Not, the camera's not going to block the sun at this angle, but it's behind the camera, so you can see the colors there. Very beautiful. The sun behind me. Try to get some different angles here. Beautiful colors. Ambers. And it, it does look like opal. If you have opal with red in it, look at that top. Beautiful. It really is beautiful and I can see how this was highly prized. Uh, it seemed almost magical as you're watching it just diffuse into the water when it's in the Nara cup and then once you pour it into a glass it's very beautiful. The colors constantly are changing depending on your angle with the sun, uh, if you're in the shade. It's always changing colors are very beautiful I'm very happy I tried this so I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching